This week we are talking about one of the most well-known traditions of Mardi Gras, and that's the parades. So let's jump right into this. While researching this video, I found out just how intertwined Mardi Gras crews are with the various parades around Louisiana. We'll discuss the crews in next week's video, but for now, it's all about the parades. Mardi Gras celebrations began way before the first parade ever rolled. They were banned when the Spanish took over New Orleans from 1762 to 1803, the French took back ownership in 1803 and sold it to the U.S. 20 days later. Now that's what I call a quick turnaround. After becoming a state on April 30th, 1812, Louisiana did not start Mardi Gras before 10 years later, 1823. For about 20 years, a gentleman named Bernard Mandeville sponsored a Creole-style celebration that was supervised by New Orleans city officials. Unfortunately, these celebrations were rowdy, so the call for banning Mardi Gras came swiftly after about 20 years of this. In about 1856, the modern Mardi Gras parade we all know and love today was born when six people from Mobile, Alabama founded a secret society called Mystic Crew of Comets. They began the parade tradition of parade floats when they held a two-float night parade on Mardi Gras Day, February 24th, 1857. It was torchlit, had marching bands, and set the tone for what parades would soon become known for. Instead of the chaos that Mardi Gras had become known for, the focus shifted from them watching passively on the sidelines while the parade made its way down the streets. The change was such a hit leading to tourists visiting New Orleans in 1858 to take part in the festivities themselves. With the success of the mystic crew of Comets, more and more and more crews began to form and hold their own specific parades, leading to what New Orleans has become known for. On Tuesday, I did say that I would talk about some of the rules that the parades have. I did a little bit of research trying to find out what some of the rules were for the parades. As far as the parade goers, you need to stand on the sidewalk away from the floats so you don't get run over. When it comes to the floats themselves, they have to have four people walking beside their float in order to make sure that people don't get in the front of the floats and to be able to pick up the bees that are thrown onto the ground and redistribute them. There must be a fire extinguisher on all floats and the floats themselves must be made of fire retardant material. When you're riding the lawnmowers in parades, and yes, some people do ride lawnmowers in the parades, you cannot have the blade and the belt that runs the blade attached to the lawnmower. That has to be removed. No glass containers. That would be an obvious one. And other parade goers and crews themselves have various other rules that you have to abide by. There's applications and application fees if you want to be in some of these parades and meetings that are mandatory for you to go to in order to be in some of these parades as well. The rules themselves are just way too numerous to mention, but you get the idea of exactly what it takes to put a parade together. When it comes to pets and parades, there are numerous rules that you need to follow should you either be bringing your pet to a parade if it's allowed, or if you are putting your pet in a parade if it's allowed. The first thing you need to remember is have all of your vaccinations up to date because some parades require you to show proof of vaccination if you are registering your pet to join the pet parade. I personally suggest you also have your dog microchipped just in case they accidentally get away from you. The second thing you should do is teach your dog all the basic commands and brush up on them constantly before going to the parade, especially if they're going to be in the parade or on the sidelines. Some parades actually require your dog or cat to be in costume during the parade. Now that's going to depend for you personally if your pet feels comfortable wearing a costume, but make sure you check all the rules and guidelines before entering your pet into a parade. And lastly, some parades have rules as far as what types of leashes, collars, and harnesses are allowed, so you want to double check all of those rules. Some even say no retractable leashes, just to be on the safe side. Some require that the leash needs to be six feet in length at least, and 
other regulations apply as well. Remember to read all the rules and regulations and if necessary, call the one who's organizing the parade to make sure you have everything you need to put your pet in the parade or to bring your pet to the parade and have a howling good time. We hope you enjoyed learning a brief history about Mardi Gras parades. Join us next week when we will talk about all of the crews of New Orleans, or at least as many of them as I can find. And trust me when I say the list is extensive. It might be a long video. Remember to bring some joy, last a smile to somebody's day, and we will see you in our next one. Later.